Cool. Okay. So, more time. Um, all right. So, today uh, I'm going to share what I've learned about Terraform and Octopus, um, specifically uh, configuring Octopus using Terraform. So, somebody um, a few days or weeks ago dropped uh, an pro open source project uh, by this fellow called Matt Hodge, um, Australian, of course, as all good things are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and and he's uh, looks like he's also got an offsider who works at Stack Exchange, um, um, Mark Henderson. Um, they've been working on this project, uh, this provider for Terraform. So I probably should start for those who are unsure about exactly what Terraform is. I think they started as a July this year. Uh, um, yeah, it was a few months ago. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. So Terraform is. Uh, you can think of it as an alternative to cloud formation or ARM templates um, or YAML or stuff, but it's so, so much nicer than any of those. Um, the reason is, um, it's one, one is the syntax and the other one is that it works across a whole heap of different things. So um, here's all the providers for it. So as you can see, it's got stuff like Acme, Cloudflare, um, Azure, um, AWS, all that sort of thing. So you can have the one template which kind of coordinates all these different um, services um, and sets up declaratively the configuration of those. So you could imagine um, with an Octopus provider that you have the Acme provider which goes and provisions your certificate uh, from Acme, <coughs> then the um, DNS Made Easy or the DNS Simple provider which actually uploads the right um, challenges into your DNS to make that Acme request succeed. And then the output of that would be a certificate and Octopus provider then puts that certificate into, into Octopus for you, right? and all with a declarative thing. So when it's time to run, uh, update your certificate, you just run this Terraform template, it, it hooks all those three services together and does that provisioning for you. Um, yeah, so there's a huge list of this, Kubernetes, all other sorts of things, um, yeah. So that's kind of what Terraform is. And how it works with Octopus is um, everything in Octopus is a resource and that's where kind of Terraform works. It works at a resource level um, and it keeps track of what the previous state was and how, how that's changed, but how the configuration has changed and works at how to get to that new state. Usually just uh, in Octopus's case, it would just be rewriting the new resource over the top. Um, because we, we don't have to have, manage too much state. Um, with things like um, VMs and that, it's a little bit more complicated because it would say you change the instance size, it's not just a matter of writing the new JSON, JSON blob to the thing. It would need to spin down um, the VM, change the instance size and spin it back up. And, it, and the provider does all that sort of thing for you. So diving, so, so let's have a look at an example. Um, so this is an example of an Azure um, template. Um, it provisions a um, public IP address um, and a network interface, an availability set for a VM and the actual VM itself. Now the syntax is, is great because unlike JSON, um, if you don't have to quote every single thing, Unlike YAML, indentation is not important and, um, and neither is layout. Um, and it also got string interpolation like this. So when, and I'm using WebStorm because there's got a really, really great plugin. Um, so I can create a new resource and it's got auto complete in it. Right? Say I want a new SQL server, right? Auto completes, password in, um, location. Um, so data means it's come, it's something that Terraform doesn't control, but I've retrieved from the API and it kind of just auto completes the value for me. Right? That's incredible. So it's really, really quick to develop. Um, and I've, I've found that syntax errors, um, I'm getting hardly any of them when I actually run the Terraform. So I'm not constantly banging my head, putting semicolons at the end, yeah. um, like TypeScript. Um, but um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the idea, right? You, you can, all the different attributes of the resource you can um, configure. 
Um, and you can also do sub configurations. Like there's a tree tree kind of um, configuration, so you can have multiple IP configurations within a network address, uh, network interface. So it supports nested resources or um, arrays of things like that. So switching over to um, Oh, is that why that spacing is different for the IP configuration? Because it's nested within the resource. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's within within that resource. This is just a. It's like another property, except it's a it's rich complex if you want, yeah. right? Complex property. Yeah. So looking at it from an octopus point of view, so we we've, we've I've done a proof of concept for um, our hosted solution, um, specifically provisioning an instance. Um, so through the provider, you set up the provider, you give it a, you can specify variables that give you in a, you know, the address and the API key at the command line. Um, so you don't have to store those inside it. And also, um, depend, you can, from the command line, specify the different environments or, you know, Octopus servers you want to, um, coordinate. So the view with this is that we can take, uh, this template apply it to our test instance, get it, um, get it working uh, and get it um, tested. And when that's, when that's good, we can take that exact same template um, and then apply it to the production. And we're sure that the, the Optimus process is exactly the same. It's using the same packages, the same variables, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. All right. So yeah, I know we've had, we've also had a couple of cracks at it in, in a, um, RFC around using C sharp code, um, but I think Terraform is quickly becoming the kind of de facto standard to to do this. It's kind of the uh, Swiss Army knife of of um, uh, desired state configuration. Right. So yeah, we there's a provider. The providers are written in GoLang or Go. Um, so I've spent a little bit of time learning Go. It's um, okay. Um, coming from a Swiss Army <laughs> background. Um, yeah, can't complain. Uh, it's, it's a new thing, but it got up, got up um, productive pretty quickly, um, and and uh, contributed one or two uh, PRs to this. Um, okay, so you know we've got a provider. Um, how do I connect to Octopus? Um, and it, the provider also tells you what the uh, what resources are available. So here we um, create a project group right for my thing, and it's called provisioning. Um, of, we can set up life cycles with retention policies and different phases and I've got an environment as well and I can reference the uh, octopus ID of the environment so I don't have to do that kind of glue code, create the environment or fetch it. Um, yeah, so I can just kind of drop that value into the, into the phase. Um, and then the actual the, uh, project, um, I've got a project, I specified the life cycle that I created earlier uh, project group and um, Terraform works out the correct order to apply all these things in. It looks at all these blocks and all the references and goes, I need to create everything in this particular order. It works that all out for you. So I don't need to worry about um, how I structure this. I just say, this is what I want and it works out um, the order that it needs to apply these changes in. Um, yeah. So, and then, yeah, so there's a, um, they provided a built-in kind of shortcut to create a, a step. Um, at the moment, it doesn't support our rich kind of, you know, actions and steps and uh, just arbitrary uh, values. But this is kind of a, just a, a package step. Yep. Um, when you say they, you mean the people, Matt Hodge. Matt, Matt Hodge friends, and, yeah. Yeah, and friends. Have, um, yeah, so that's... That's, that's uh, kind of supported and I guess that's what they needed and, and it does get you going quickly. Um, there would be a little bit more work involved to kind of expand it out to do the full rich kind of configuration that uh, we would need. But yeah, so um, look, you can specify the name of the package, the script to run in the package and you know, the parameters. And so I'll come in here and I've realized oh, this parameter is wrong and this, this should say hello. Um, so I can just save that off, um, go to the command line and run um, the Terraform apply command, mm -hmm. specify my API key at the command line. It goes and looks at the current state that's um, on disk 
and, and says, okay, what do I, do I need to do to transition from A to B? And in this case, it tells me, look, this is all that's going to change. Um, due to how API works, what it's actually going to do is just slap the whole new JSON against our API, ignoring what's, what's there at the moment. So I can hit yes. Yeah, right, and updates the, makes the change. And if I hop back over into my octopus, oops, my octopus instance. So if I hop back into my octopus instance, I can see in provision instance, I've got my process here, um, and it's got the command line there. Right. So it's fixed up. Um, you can also do variables. Uh, one of the key things is, uh, depending on how you model it, um, you don't have to have everything in Terraform. So if we, in this example, I've only got the variable called uh, server name in Terraform, and this one is one I've added just manually. And it won't delete that because it doesn't know about it. Um, yeah. So in that Terraform te um, template, they've treated each variable as a resource. So we just merge it in as, as appropriate. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the whole thing, it's early days. It doesn't support uh, quite a lot of our things, but um, you know, I can see this being useful for managing users, managing processes, in environments, um, step templates, all sorts of things. So yeah, um, I think it's worth putting a little time into and, and seeing where we can get to with it. 